there are people who hear voices in uh, in the Bible all over the place, and they hear voices in the same way that uh, people who hear voices these days hear them. So the most common thing that people hear when they hear voices is their own name said. Moses, Moses, here am I. That's how they open discussions. Now, we tend to be terrified of voices because we live in, um, I don't know, we live in a, a shadow of ignorance, really. But um, if you look at the dissociative ad identity disorder forums, there's quite a fair degree of consensus on how you deal with voices. That's, that's the forums, the internet forums on people who hear voices. And one of the ways you do it is by um, focusing on one of the on one of the voices. So drowning out the like, not focusing on the others, focusing on one, trying to get their name out of them. Right uh, now, a that's really interesting because in occultism, that's how you get power over uh, over a, over a demon or um, or an entity is by finding out its name. Uh, and in fact, even in, sh in 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 shamanism, the idea of an ikaro. An ikaro is a phrase of music, so rather than a phrase of letters, a, phrase, a word, it's a, it's a specific phrase of music which kind of transmits the power of a particular plant or an elemental force or something like that. So uh, a particular name. Now, uh, and also in the Bible, you know, they, they keep on asking uh, Moses when he meets uh, Yahweh, he says, uh, what should I call you? And, and Yahweh says, I am that I am. But you can call me I am to your friends, right? I am, ye he. Uh, and it was evening and it was morning. Ve ye he, Erev. Ve ye he, uh, Yahweh. It's the same word. Benus, isness is what uh, Yahweh's name is. Um, so back to the voice hearers. Uh, if you, you know, um, some of, the, some of the forums talk about people developing good names, good relationships with the, with the, with the voices in their heads. And then, you know, you don't, you don't hear so much about people who have good relationships with voices in their heads. Uh, I've got a friend who's an acupuncturist, uh, and one of the, you know one of the ways that she does her job is by listening to the voices in her head. Now she doesn't go to take herself to the psychiatrist and say I've got voices in my head. She charges people money um, to uh, as the voices in her head are telling her where to put the things. Right, so voices are quite helpful sometimes. Um, some people again on the on the forums will say you know the voices used to be troubling and quite often they do come in in a in an aggressive manner but if you develop a good relationship with the voices then they start to tell you things like uh, people would give the example of um, one of the examples in my book is someone was told by he's a farmer and the voices tell him no oh, your, your cows are broken into the feed room for example and off he goes and yeah they have someone else is looking for her camera and they says oh your camera's in your bag oh yeah so it was now um uh, this is very common in, in occultism, in um, kind of shamanism, the idea of, 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 of making an enemy spirit into an ally, right, by learning its name. What does a name mean? In Hebrew, shem, it means fixed. So once you pin it down and hold it down, get a power over it, get it to behave itself, and it becomes your, your ally. So Moses says, for example, how can I go and, uh, go and challenge Pharaoh? I'm gun. Uh, I've got a stutter. And Yahweh says, I will be with thee, right? So you don't need to worry about your, your, your rubbish manner of speech. He said, actually, uncircumcised lips is the word he uses. Um, but, um, um, yeah, I, I, you know, Yahweh puts words into his mouth. And sometimes we find that. I don't know if um, artists find that their, their pen is controlled. Like William Blake talks about this, writing against his will you know, dictation, uh, 12 or 16 lines at a time. Nietzsche, uh, again, it also talks when it talks about an overwhelming, like, floods of tears and um, overwhelming urge to write. I mean, I know in my experience, it was an, an absolute urgency to write, and if anything got in my way of writing, I would be uh, very, very short with them. And, you know, sometimes the words will, will come faster than I can than I can get them down. I think it's a very common experience in, 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 in artists and in writers, of um of that compulsion uh, interestingly enough you see it with um there's examples of people who had uh medicine uh were taking medicine for epilepsy who might reduce their dose for example there's a woman who reduced her dose and then started compulsively writing poetry so epilepsy there's another uh, we you know it's a, a kind of mental illness i suppose um but the phenomenology of it which is convulsions seeing visions uh ecstasy terror they're all described in the in the literature of mystics and also uh, experiences of um, visitation in the Bible. 